So today we're going to look at multiplying fractions. I'm going to work through this online homework with you. And that way, when you have a go at it yourself, it should be a little bit easier. The lesson tells you all the theory, but um, getting somebody to help you work through the sorts of questions you'd be expected to do is very helpful. So um, the numbers you would have will be different, but uh, the sorts of questions will be very similar. Um, as always, a pen and paper will be handy for workings, but you cannot use a calculator for this homework. So let's begin. So uh, multiplying fractions, answering the lowest terms. These are pretty straightforward as far as fractions go. You just have to multiply the top numbers, multiply the bottom numbers, and then we'll check to see if we can simplify it. So 1 times 4 is 4, and 7 times 9 is 63. They don't simplify, so that's as simple as it gets. Okay, right, some big numbers here. 1 times 16 is 16. Right, 4 times 17. So if I double it, I get 34. Double it again, I'm going to get 68. Right, they're both even numbers, so I'm going to halve them. If I halve them, I'm going to get 8 over 34. Uh, they're still both even numbers, so I'm going to halve them again. And then I'll get 4 over 17. And that's as simple as it gets. Next one. 6 times 3 makes 18. 8 times 11 makes 88. Okay, even numbers, so half them. 9 over 44. They're both not even anymore, and so we can't really do anything because 9 has only got 9 or 3 as a factor, and that doesn't go into 44. Right, next one. 5 times 14 and 8 times 15. Okay, these are getting pretty tricky. Okay, so there's two ways we can do it. I'll show you the first way, and then I'll show you an alternate way afterwards. So 5 times 14, that's going to make uh, 70. We can get just work it out on a bit of paper. And 8 times 15, same sort of thing we can do. We can get that that's 120 just by working it out on a bit of paper. There's not even enough space to put the 120 in because it's going to simplify. Uh, when you, If we imagine that bottom one's at 120 and they both end in zeros, we can knock the zeros off, divide them by 10, and we get 7 twelfths. Let's look at a simpler way we could have got that. So fractions, you can cancel in what's called a bow tie method. That is up and down or diagonally. So if you imagine going up and down and diagonally, it draws out a bow tie. You can't cancel across. But anyway, when you draw a bow tie on it, you can cancel. So 5 and 15, I can cancel them down straight away. I could change that to a 1 and that to a 3. I could cancel these down. I could halve both of these. I could get a 4 and a 7. 1 times 7 makes 7. 4 times 3 makes 12. I could have got it simpler that way. But nothing wrong with getting a bit of paper, working it out and simplifying it afterwards. The important thing is you get the right answer in the end. Okay, now, multiplying fractions that involve mixed numbers. What we can't do is just do 5 times something and put a 5 at the end. We can't do that. What we've got to do is we've got to change them to improper fractions first, top heavy fractions. So, the way we do that is we've got to realize that 5 is the same as 10 halves. 5 times 2 makes 10. Add that one half we've already got, that's the same as 11 halves. When we do that, now we can multiply. So 2 times 11 makes 22. 2 times 5 makes 10. I can simplify these because uh, I can halve the top and the bottom. I can change out to 11 over 5. And then it wants it as a mixed number again. I know it's a lot of changing back and forth, but this is the harder exercise, so it is going to get a little bit harder. So we've got to think, how many 5s go into 11? I get two 5s from 11 with a remainder of 1, and that 5 stays on the bottom. Okay, and if we imagine doing it the other way, if you try just putting the 5 in the end box, it would have been wrong straight away. So same thing here, 6 sevenths, that's fine. Now I've got to change this 9 and 1 sixth into an improper fraction. So I've got to figure out how many sixths 9 is. So 9 is 54 sixths. I did that by doing 9 times 6. Add the 1, that makes 55 sixths. Okay, now, I 
So I'd do 6 times 55 and 7 times 6 and then just work them out and simplify them. But remember that bow tie method I said, I can cancel diagonally. I can cancel those sixths out, so that becomes 1 seventh and 55 over 1. So I can know that's going to be 1 times 55 and 7 times 1. But again, if you want to go and do a bit of pay, pen and paper, work that out and cancel it down afterwards, you can. It's just obviously a bit harder. So how many 7s go into 55? Because we're going to change it to a mixed number. I can get 7 7s make 49 and then there's six left over and the seven goes on the bottom okay and the last one i've got to change both of these two uh improper fractions if i try just doing two times one to get two at the end it's not going to work out the same so two and one sixth that two is equal to 12 sixths and that one six i've already got makes 13 over six one and one half that one is two halves Plus that one makes three halves. Okay, these numbers are small enough, so I can just multiply them. It's going to get me 39 over 12. But three goes into both of those. So if I simplify those down, I can get 13 over 4. And then I've got to figure out that uh, we've got three fours go into 13 and there's going to be one left over so let's just check those you might have to go over this a couple of times to understand these mixed numbers ones because they are pretty tricky and there's a lot of steps but everything's explained there great got them all right uh, let's have a look at the next question so worded questions we've got to be thinking in the frame of mind of multiplying fractions okay so jarvis works in a garage for six pounds an hour if he works on a Saturday, he's paid time and a half, so one and a half times. If he works Sunday, he's paid time and three quarters, so that means one and three quarters times. Okay, so uh, last weekend, Jarvis worked for three hours on Saturday and two hours on Sunday. How much was he paid? Right, so he, he worked for uh, three hours on Saturday, but he's paid time and a half. So that's one and a half. So I've got to realize that he um, is going to be paid one and a half times three. I've got to triple this. So if I make it an improper fraction, a pen and paper is going to be necessary for this. So um, if you if you make this an improper fraction, then it's going to be 3 over 2. Times up by 3, it will be 9 over 2. And 9 over 2 is the same as 4 and a half hours. Okay? Just think about it as I did 3 times 1 and a half. 3 times 1 and a half, or 3 times 1 pound 50, imagine that. You're going to get uh, 4 and a half. Right, so 2 hours on a Sunday, I've got a double one and three quarters so uh, one and three quarters is equal to seven quarters so double that makes 14 quarters i can get three and there's going to be two quarters left over which is a half two quarters is the same as a half so all together i'm going to be paid for seven eight hours and eight times six pounds an hour, 14 pounds, right? This is a seven mark question. I did it a lot of it in my head. I would expect you to do a lot of that as uh, on pen and paper. So what you need to do is you would need to figure out one and a half times three on paper, uh, one and three quarters times two on paper, add those up and then multiply that by uh, six. So if we check that, we've got it right. Excellent. So hopefully that helps.